Hi, welcome back to Complexity Papers. I recently made a video in which I highlighted six common modeling misconceptions. Now, one of these misconceptions was that models get better if you specify everything. In fact, the opposite is true. Models get better if you leave some things unspecified, because mass is actually good at working with unknowns. Today, I want to follow this up with a specific example that is called generalized modeling, and that is modeling with unknown functions. In this video, I'm assuming that you know how models are usually studied with nonlinear dynamics and particular stability analysis. If you don't, I hope to have a video for you soon. For a simple example, let's say you're interested in a system that can be depicted like this. You have a single variable that is maybe the population size of a species. And this variable changes due to two processes. One which is a gain and one which is a loss. Under fairly general conditions, we can model the system with a differential equation that looks like this. We write the change of the population size, and this change equals to the sum of two contributions. The one contribution is a gain, which we describe by a function g of x, and the other is a loss, which we describe by a function l of x. So far, these two functions are completely unspecified. We will, however, assume that they are sufficiently smooth and that they are positive. Which kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If the gain would be negative, we wouldn't call it a gain. So far, we have a very general model, which is awesome, because if you think about it, this model describes all possible models that could possibly describe your system. So, you know that the best model is somehow in there already. So, in this very general model, we can't even compute the stationary states. But we know that such stationary states must exist in the model, right? So far, we are still describing such a large space of possible functions that certainly some of these functions will give us models with steady state. In fact, some of these functions will give us models with many steady states. So, let's talk about an unknown steady state that exists somewhere in this model. And we will call the state x star. So, what do we actually know about x star? Not much, but we will assume that it describes a positive steady state. To make progress, we can rescale the system such that this unknown steady state is at a known location in new units of measurement. In fact, we can rescale the system such that the steady state lands at 1. So how do we do this? Well, we define a new variable, which we call small x, that is the old x divided by the unknown steady state value x star. Can I actually divide something by a number I don't know? Sure. Mathematically, I can totally do this. While we are on it, let's also define rescaled functions. I want to define a new loss function, small l, and a new gain function, small g. And I define them by taking the old functions and dividing them by their steady state value. These steady state values of these functions, we can write them as g of x star and l of x star, but we can also abbreviate them by g star and l star. Let's write a differential equation for our new variable. We can do this by writing the definition of the derivative and then substituting in the definition of the variable, which gives us an equation that relates the change in the new variable to the change in the old variable. But of course, for the old variable, we know the equation that describes the change. So let's put this in, and while we are on it, we can also substitute the old functions that appear there with our new functions. So, now we have a differential equation where we know where the steady state is. It's at 1, because we put it at 1. And also, all the functions in the steady state will be at 1. The price we have to pay for this is that unknown constants now appear in the equation. But unknown constants, these are just parameters. And we know how to deal with unknown parameters, don't we? So, let's give these parameters a name. And here's the only point in generalized modeling where we have to be careful. Because by assuming 
that x star is a steady state, we also implicitly assumed that the gain and the loss in the steady state equal. So g star and l star are actually the same. So we see that only one combination of constants appears in our equation. And we can call this combination alpha. So now we can analyze the stability of the steady state. And to do so, we need to compute the Jacobian matrix. The Jacobian matrix is a matrix that contains all the partial derivatives of the differential equation in the steady state. But because we're dealing with a one-dimensional system here, the Jacobian is just a one-by-one -one matrix. And because it's a one-by-one -one matrix, the only element it has is also its eigenvalue lambda. If we now substitute our actual system in, these nasty derivatives of unknown functions appear. So, are we actually making progress? After all, we have now derivatives of unknown functions with respect to an unknown variable in an unknown state. However, we can also look at this in a different way. After we've evaluated these derivatives, they will be numbers. They are unknown numbers because they are derivatives of unknown functions in an unknown state. But unknown constants, again, this is just parameters. So let's just call the derivative of the gain gamma. And we call the derivative of the loss mu for m, as in mortality. Let's check where we are. We have discovered a way of writing the Jacobian in a steady state in our general class of models. And the Jacobian depends on some unknown parameters. And this starts to make it feel almost like a random matrix model, doesn't it? But in fact, what makes this particularly nice is that we have an interpretation for these three parameters. Well, look at alpha. This parameter is the gain in the steady state divided by the population size. So that is the per capita birth rate, or you could also call it the turnover of the population. To understand the parameters gamma and mu, we have to think a bit more carefully, but I can already promise you they will have very nice interpretations. So let's see what happens if the loss was a linear function. We could write the loss as some constant a times the population size x. Now, if we normalize this function in the way we have done it, then the a actually cancels, and we are left with small x. So the derivative mu would be 1. So for every linear function, the parameter value mu will always be 1. Let's see what happens if we make the loss quadratic instead. Oh, that gives you a parameter value of 2. And in general, if the loss was any kind of power law, any mononomial, then we just get the exponent as a parameter value. And for more complicated functions, it also behaves like you would assume. On a linear stretch, we find a value of 1. And if you go to saturation, we find a value of 0. With some additional math, we can actually show that parameters like gamma and mu are actually logarithmic derivatives of the original function. Such logarithmic derivatives are also called elasticities, and they were originally introduced in economic theory because they provide an intuitive way to describe nonlinearity, and they can be estimated conveniently from data. Back in our system, we can now write the eigenvalue of the Jacobian matrix as a function of three parameters that we can interpret. And we know that the steady state under consideration is stable if the eigenvalue is negative. So we can now say, in every system of this form, every positive steady state must be stable if the elasticity of loss is greater than the elasticity of the gain. So, we analyzed a small generalized model, 
and we get a very general result. For the small model, this result is hardly surprising, but it's nice to see it come out in this way. Now the question is, does this trick help you achieve what you want to do? And I think yes, that could be the case. Because there are ways in which we can build much larger and much more complex generalized models. And then there are even many more ways in which we can analyze them. Generalized modeling is powerful and fun to use because it allows you to represent exactly what you know about a system in the model and leave everything that you don't know unspecified. If you're interested in generalized modeling and want to know it a little bit deeper, I have a review for you that I drop in the comments. And maybe there will also be some more videos about generalized models and their analysis. But for now, see you next time for more complexity papers. So I will put some links in the details and that was some ice almost hitting me.